hey there! Today we're going to have a look at a pen that I actually thought was pretty cool. I was approached by Inventory. Uh, they make pens. Uh, I, I actually used a couple of their, I think, rollerballs because Aziza had a few. And they now launched a pocket fountain pen and they asked if I was willing to review it, so I said, sure. They sent me three. There is three materials or finishes, I should say. I should say you can pick from, and I think they're kind of cool. Now they are pocket pens, but they come with a little twist. So this is actually longer than it would be usually because it has a little extender in the middle, which you can take out, and then if you take that out, it all fits together and becomes a very compact pen. But I'll show you that when I, when I point the camera down. So what are we talking about? Minimally. Or minimalistically machined pens, uh, uh, one would say. Um, they have that extendable body, you can also get it without the extender, that, that saves you uh, I think $30 or something. Uh, it's a fine or extra fine Schmidt nib, not rebranded, simple Schmidt nib, but interestingly it also comes with a rollerball section which you can use with fountain pen cartridges or a converter, which interesting, gives you another writing option. Modular cap system, I'll show you that too. You can put different finials on the pen. I kind of like it. So I'm going to cover the past the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, but before I do that, I'll do a quick writing sample. Let's get started. Okay, so what is this pen all about? Uh, you get it in a box like this, uh, and as I said, it is a pocket pen. Um, but it has some interesting features going on. So, first of all, the pen. Now, you can get them in three finishes. They're all brass, um, but there is uh, onyx, which is a black uh, finish. There is brushed chrome, and then there is the, uh, I think they call it raw brass, but in any case, it's just brass. So here you see them all side by side, but before I go into those. I just want to show you all the, the, the different cool little gadgets and things you get in the box. I will admit I'm a little bit of a sucker when it comes to cute little kits with different accessories and such, but maybe that's why I'm so enthusiastic about it. In any case, so here you have the basic pen. This is the pen, you can use it just like this. comes with one cartridge in the barrel and there is a converter supplied as well. This is the pocket version of the pen. The most basic version. So you unscrew the cap. Of course I'm going to go over the parts of the actual pen in a second. Let's just first go over the box. This happens to be in the rollerball mode, um, but you can also put it in a fountain pen mode because the set comes with a little nib unit as well. Schmidt number five, fine or extra fine. Uh, nothing particularly outstanding, but these are nibs that just write. I, I, two of these pens I used in the fountain pen mode and both gave me absolutely no issues whatsoever. So that's, that's kind of neat. So you get that, then you get this extender unit, because it is possible you don't want to use this with a cartridge, in this case the supplied cartridge, but you want to use it with a converter. And the first thing you, the problem you run into then is that it simply will not fit. But, if you use this extender, which just screws on very simply, you can screw it onto the barrel, and boom, you have a full-size pen which easily fits a standard Schmidt converter. So that is an option too. Now, because I kind of want to show you one in the, the, the pocket version, uh, I'll, I'll put this back together. And just in case you want to know, it is on the smaller side. It is a pocket pen, of course, but it posts very securely with threads. So then you have a pretty nicely sized pen. But wait, there's more. There are three separate finials you can put on the pen. It comes pre-installed. Of course, the last one is always the toughest one to get out. Huh? Um, it comes pre-installed with a finial that offers what I think a lot of people will appreciate, uh, which is a clip. And I kind of like this clip because it really stands away from the pen, which is very good for, for, for example, want to do pocket carry, so slide it into the, uh, the pocket of, of jeans or something, and then this can stick out, so you have that space. Now, as I said, I think that's what many people will appreciate, 
But if you don't want that, you want something that's even more minimalist, you can simply put on the, what I have termed the minimalist finial, and now you have this. In principle, same thing, uh, same thickness and such as the clipped finial, but without the clip. If you don't like that, there is the keychain finial. Allows you to put the uh, pen on a split ring, or I guess if you have a, a, a lanyard with a thin uh, uh, carabiner, you can put that on, or you can put it on a split ring and then put that on a, on a uh, lanyard, of course. Uh, but that is another option. And the third option, which I actually liked quite a bit, is a capacitive, <coughs> pardon me, a capacitive tip, which you can use for your phone or tablet or whatever, and actually works pretty well. Um, on that topic, uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, this happens to be my phone, which you can use, uh, Instagram, etc. Uh, works well. So, there is that. Uh, works nicely. I'm going to put this back in the clipped version and then let's have a look at the parts of the pen. <clears throat> Just so you know, for size reference, this is the pen in its pocket mode next to a Lamy Safari and this is the pen in its extended mode, different finish but they're all the exact same size um, in the extended mode. So as you can see it's roughly, well actually it's a little shorter than the uh, the, the Safari is definitely a little bit thinner. Okay, so I am going to use this pen to show you the parts. The top, the finial has the inventory logo, so it's what's also on the box. Very simple, very clean. I, I like that. Then you have the clip, as I said, stands away a bit from the pen. That's the same thing on each of the finishes. It does work well for pocket carry, I found. Pen, very simple, solid tube, there's no real tapering down or anything. Being uh, the uh, uh, brass, they do weigh a bit, so they're, they're quite solid. And of course they get even more solid with the extender in place. As you can see, cap posts very securely onto the barrel, um, so you can use this as a normally sized pen. This happens to be the rollable tip, let me grab the... Uh, fountain pen, do the same thing there. So this would be the Schmid nib. Simple Schmid nib, does everything as advertised, writes well, plastic feed, all quite simple. And here you can see that the converter fits quite easily. Be a little careful when you put this back in place. I found that you sometimes you can get a little snag. This converter happens to have threads and there's nothing to thread onto. So it might be a little smoother if those threads were not there, but I haven't really found this to be a big issue. So you have that. That is the <clears throat> all brass version. And as I said, kind of fun. Takes cartridges. So for a rollerball, this way you can use your favorite fountain pen ink or you can use it in the extended mode with the converter. Brass, the brushed chrome, and the onyx oxidized black, I think they called it, all work the same way. This happens to be in the capacitive tip uh, 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 finial, uh, but I found that to be very comfortable, especially with the extender in place. Uh, this is a nice stylus size and works, works very well. Of course, this posts as well, but you're probably not going to use this tip. Uh, with that nib open and posted. I have tried it. You can mix and match parts, so if you want this with a black uh, extender, you can do that. And there is other fun to be had, and uh, not all of it equally useful. Um, I put that in the cartridge mode on purpose. In theory, you can put the barrel on there, and then put the extender on the back, as opposed to putting it in the section range. Um, the pen will still post that way. The only problem with this is that you have this hole there, which is what usually slides over the cartridge. And you cannot, I tried that, you cannot put one of the finials on here. That would be cool, but kind of useless, and I was uh, just playing around with that. 
And of course you can also combine it. In theory I can put another extender on here and then the barrel to make a, a very long pen, but it is pretty useless. It, uh, that, that, wouldn't, that would just make a very, very long slender pen. Okay, let's have a look at how these pens write. Uh, I'm not going to write with all three of them simply because it's all... Uh, it's the same nib uh, on, on both of them. I, both are fine grades. Let's start with this one. Uh, I'm not going to use it posted. found it a little top heavy in the extended mode. So here we have the inventory pocket fountain pen. The nib is fine steel and the ink is diamine something. Aqua blue, I think. The nib does everything you can expect from a Schmidt nib. Uh, it writes. I don't find it particularly scratchy. Uh, there is some feedback, and I found that in all of them. But uh, it, it, it does, as you can see, it, it, it writes uh, quite quite well. No real skips. Quite nice. Uh, works well with the converter, and I've also found it to work well with the with the cartridges. Not a gusher, but decent enough, I would say. As always, very careful, but there is some line variation possible. But it's 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 not a flex nib, so don't don't push it too hard. Finally, reverse writing is definitely scratchier and dry and does take you from a fine to an extra fine. Now, just so you have an idea, this is the pocket uh, pen, so the pen, what I call in, in pocket mode. Uh, you can see, I've been using it for a bit, uh, you can see that the, the difference between the section and the barrel, because in this finish it will patina. So some people will undoubtedly like that, others will not. You can always polish it again. Okay, um, so this is rollerball mode. I am not really a rollerball user, but what I will say is uh, it's uh, it's smooth. And I like the idea that you can use a rollerball tip with uh, fountain pen inks. Gives you more of a, a color range than most rollerballs give you. Of course, this is not a unique thing. Uh, Gerbain has done this, uh, Noodles has, Visconti has. Uh, so it's it's not a, a revolutionary breakthrough, but I do find it fun and interesting that you get this tip with a pen of this caliber. Uh, I mean, of this in this this price range that you get the two options. That is kind of nice. And beyond that, I mean, it's it's what you expect. It's it's a rollerball, uh, no line variation, uh, uh, none none of that, of course. But it does what it's supposed to do. And it is nice. I can see how, especially for a pocket pen, you might actually not want to have a fountain pen, you just want to have a rollerball. Can't believe I just said that, but it's it is convenient, right? It will leak less. It will, you know, it will if you move it around a bit. Uh, there shouldn't really be a lot of ink flying out of the nib or anything. So it is a cool option. Okay, enough talk. Let's talk some more and discuss what I like about and not like about these pens. Okay, what do I like? What do I not like about these? inventory pens. Typically I am not really someone who is greatly into the, the, the minimalist designed uh, pen thing. I, I, I don't really feel it, so to speak. However, when I saw these pens, I was actually pretty enthusiastic, and I, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, the sort of cool industrial design look. I, I yeah, I don't really know. I, I, as I said, I don't really care for minimalist design, but I know that some people do, and that's perfectly fine, right? I'm just speaking from my uh, my, my viewpoint. 
Three finishes is nice. The black is, is very nice, very good for business, a bit more tactical looking. Uh, this is definitely uh, the, the, um, the, the brush chrome was more of a tech-like uh, version. And the brass is nice. There's a lot of a big brass crowd out there that loves uh, brass accessories and such. So I, I think they, they, they pick those finishes well. You can match up the nibs well. So there is a sort of a chrome colored nib, there's a black nib, and there is a, a gold colored nib. So you can match it up to the, uh, uh, the looks of your pen, which, which I think is very nice. But for me, what, what, what I really like is the modular approach they took with this pen. The fact that you get both a fountain pen tip, so a fountain pen nib, let's, let's, it's not really a section, it's, it's actually just a unit. Um, the, the rollerball unit looks just like this, a nib collar and then a, a rollerball insert. That you get that with the pen, I think is neat, because that means you're buying two writing instruments at the same time. And even though I am not really a rollerball user, as I said, I, I do see the use of this, especially in a, in a carryable pocket pen. You just quickly sign a form or something, sometimes a rollerball, let's face it, is very convenient. I like that. I also like that extender option. Now, that is an option. So you have to spend 30 more dollars to get that. The regular set comes with the rollerball tip, comes with all the finials, but only comes with that, not the extender. The extender is a $30 extra. Come back to price in just a second. And then there is yet more modularity. You can choose a clip, you can choose a clipless finial, you can choose the keychain, and you can choose the capacitive tip. So you can really set up the pen the way you like, and that is a customization option that you don't really find on that many pens, I think. So I like that. As I said, the Onyx, the brushed chrome, and the brass versions are all available. The brass will definitely patina nicely, which is something I kind of like. It's a nice trace of use. And then you have the, the matching nib colors available. So I, I, also, I think that all of that is pretty cool. Things I don't like so much. Not a whole lot. I find the section to be comfortable. I find the pens to be comfortable to use. They are metal pens. They are brass. They are a little bit heavier, but because of their diminutive size, they're not too heavy. I've definitely used brass pens that are so heavy that it's getting to a point where it's a bit ridiculous and it's not really that comfortable to use for longer writing sessions anymore. These pens are just solid, but I don't think they are too, uh, too heavy to use. I will say that posted with the extender in place, maybe they're a bit too long, but of course nobody forces you to post it, especially when you have that extender in place. I think many people will be able to use the pen comfortably unposted. But if you want to, there is the option to put the uh, cap on the threads in the back and just post it that way. I think the big issue is one that is always an issue when it comes to fountain pens, and that is that of price. So as I understand it, the set without, so let's say the set without the extender, so you get the four finials, you get the, uh, the, the fountain pen nib unit, as well as the rollable tip unit, uh, you get, of course, the pen, you get a converter, and you get one cartridge. Those are 135 US. The same set, but with the extender included, is 165 US. So, in principle, you pay $30 for this. And I'm sure that if you, uh, if you are a, a, a slightly gifted machiner, so to speak, you can make this yourself. And also, I don't know if it's just me, but this really looks like a shell casing to me. But that, that's... anyway. Um, there is all that. So the price, if you want the full set, $165, that is not particularly cheap, I find, for a pocket pen, metal nib, Schmidt nib, unbranded, uh, yes, uh, converter is included, but it is a cartridge converter pen. On the other hand, you can also look at it as you, in fact, get two writing instruments, because you get a fountain pen and a rollerball. Of course, you cannot use them at the same time, uh, but you, you, you do have that option. And if you look at the market where a lot of acrylic pens that are uh, turned these days are made of acrylic, they come with a converter and they have a steel nib, Jovo as opposed to Schmidt, but um, it doesn't really matter that much, they're both steel nibs. They typically go for about 160 bucks too. The only difference is then you get a beautiful colorful acrylic, not a metal pen. But on the other hand, you also don't get the several finials, you don't get the extending option, etc. So 
I really I struggle a little bit with this with this pricing and I'm I I'm not sure I like it but I'm not sure I dislike it either I hope that makes sense so this will really be something that you have to weigh for yourself and see whether it's worth it what I will say and that is a completely subjective statement uh, when I said yes to be sent these pens for review I wasn't sure if I really like them because this is typically not a design that really appeals to me but I've been using them a lot uh, in just private use as I after I got them in because I do find them comfortable and a lot of fun so in that regard for me these would be worth the price not three of them but I, I wouldn't mind buying one of them and, and using it uh, more extensively because of all the options okay so the bottom line as far as I'm concerned a not inexpensive pen but, especially in the $165 set, you get a lot of options. The, the fact you can customize it, the different finials, the extender, the two uh, writing, the writing options. That's kind of cool. So I like it. Sorry, it's just the way it is, isn't it? <laughs> not that funny. Okay, hope this was useful. Inventory, a very kind thank you for sending me not one but three of these pens. That's, that's very much appreciated. I hope this review was useful. And guys, I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.